In this video, I'm going to show you how to bootstrap a VM series firewall using an ISO image. Uh, the admin guide walks you through several different ways of bootstrapping physical firewalls USB, virtual firewalls can use U uh, ISOs, uh, another block storage hard drive, or even an S3 bucket or uh, cloud storage, depending on the environment you're deploying into. The process takes about 30 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and kick this off right now. So I'm just going to go uh, deploy a new VM from an OVA, all right? And I'm going to grab the file from uh, my little bootstrapping folder here, and we'll, we'll look through the contents of this while the uh, deployment is happening. So here's the 1004 OVA, and I'm just going to name this VM-50 bootstrap, like that. And <clears throat> pick your storage as you normally would. Very important, uncheck the box to power on automatically. We do not want to power on because we need to make some changes. Go ahead and finish. And then this will go ahead and uh, start the deployment process. And once this is done, we'll come back and add our ISO to this VM50. And then we could change it since uh, I'm going to do a VM50, I'm going to leave it as is. But if you wanted to deploy a larger size firewall with more CPUs, more memory, more storage, uh, you would definitely want to make those changes before you power it on. All right, so as you look through the admin guide here for bootstrapping, and this goes you know, back to 7.1.8.0, all the way to 10.0 and 10.1, uh, you'll see the process is pretty, pretty much the same. Now I've gone ahead and uh, created several things here. So let's look at this, right? In my bootstrapping folder, I've got a, uh, a folder called bootstrap disk, and the contents of this have these different folders, and those are all outlined in the admin guide for preparing the bootstrap files, and then what does the, the folder structure need to look like, etc. So let's walk through each of these one at a time. Under config, you can see I've got a bootstrap.xml and this init.config.txt file. The init.config.txt file basically is the, the initial settings of the VM series that it needs to inherit. So I've gone ahead and <clears throat> hidden my auth key just for you know safety, but you would put in your VM series auth code if you are registering it using our newer Firewall Flex credit based model. Uh, give it a host name. I like to put bootstrapped in there so that when this firewall adds itself to my panorama, it'll show up under the, the host name or the key name bootstrap. And then I've also dropped it into these, uh, this template stack called unprovisioned-stack and then this device group uh, named unprovisioned. And then I've also referenced a collector group. This is my log collector. It's a VM series in panorama mode, so its name is panorama. And then any additional uh, addressing you want, if you need to do any um, operational mode commands afterwards, like you could put in here, re retrieve license keys. Uh, we're gonna handle that in a different way. But there are a bunch of different commands you could put in here, even the option to enable uh, DPDK or SRIOV, those things can be all enabled here as well as um, in the VM once you deploy it into ESX. So bootstrapping is a nice, easy way to get firewalls deployed quickly. Um, now, how deployed they start out is really up to you because you're going to have this bootstrap.xml file which is an initial config of your firewall. So you can see there's, there's quite a few things here. I just took that same 1004 OVA, deployed it, did not license it, and then I went through and added settings that I knew I wanted, like I changed the admin password, it's no longer admin admin, so when I deploy this, it's already in a, a more secure state than the default. Uh, I can go ahead and set up any Ike crypto profiles or gateways, and when the firewall is deployed, have tunnels come up, essentially phoning home so that it can do things like add itself to your panorama. If this is meant to be a remote firewall, you can pre-stage any security rules, any routes you need, any NATs you need, pretty much anything you need, you can pre-stage in this config. Now, don't be tempted to put too much in here if the goal is to ultimately add it to panorama and then push from panorama, the panorama config. So do just enough that you're able to get it up uh, and, and online. Okay, so midway through that deployment, uh, let's look through some of the other folders I've got here. Right, th that's those two files we just looked at. Uh, inside of content, this is gonna be your updates, right? So the antivirus update, uh, the applications and threats, that's the all contents. 
If I did not have a threats, uh, threat prevention license, I would just grab all apps and then load that. And then I've also added wildfire. Now wildfire is unnecessary in this case because in my uh, bootconfig.xml file, I've already set schedules for antivirus updates, apps and threats updates, wildfire updates. And so on initial boot, if I've set wildfire to be real time, there's no point in loading a signature uh, file in here. Uh, so, you know, if you want, you can, you don't have to. I've also got inside of license, I've got my auth codes. Uh, this is also gonna be a callback to the auth code in my init config, uh, .txt file. If you have a physical firewall and you're licensing it, you would pre-license that serial number on the support portal and then you'll see there's the little downward arrows next to each license type within support.palatinetworks.com, uh, assets, devices. And then you can download the license key file for each type of license and then save them into this folder here. Since I'm doing a VM series, all it really needs is this auth code. It'll reach back to the support portal and then license itself using the CPU ID and UUID, which means I don't have to do anything more now and if this auth code is a multi-activation auth code, mine is a one-to-one. -one. But if you've, let's say, got a 10 VM series activation auth code, pop that in here and you got 10 VM series you can bootstrap, 30 minute process, and then they're all online, all configured the way you want. Uh, so some cool things that can be done there. Under plugins, this is not a required folder. At least some of the versions of the admin guide I read did not say plugins was required. I went ahead and added that because some did say you can have it as an optional. And then I, it is a VM series firewall, so I went and put the latest VM series plugin in here. Physical firewalls don't necessarily need plugins except for some scenarios like maybe DLP or um, SD-WAN or, or some other plugins, depending on if you've got a license that requires a plugin to be installed, you can pre-stage those here. And then the software. So this is PanOS itself. Now I'm deploying 10.04 OVA, and then by having this staged in here, it will upgrade to 10.06. And then as the last step of that uh, upgrade process, the VM series will reboot. After it reboots, it'll add the licenses and the, con uh, the, the content updates, etc. Now if I was going from, let's say, a 9.1 OVA to a 10.0 final installation, inside a software, I would need to grab the base image as well, like 10.00, and then the subversion 10.06. So just kind of keep in mind, some of those things may be required depending on uh, how you go about it. Okay, so my bootstrap firewall has been deployed, right? Uh, I'm gonna open it up now, and then we're gonna make some changes to it. So if I needed a, like a VM300 or VM500, I'd add more CPUs and memory. But since I wanna bootstrap, I absolutely must add this CD-ROM ISO if I'm not gonna use another hard drive or block storage device. I've already uploaded the ISO to um, my ESX server. Now one other really, really important thing that's easy to forget about or overlook, hit this little droppy down arrow, check these two boxes. Otherwise, bootstrapping ain't gonna work the way you're hoping it's gonna work. And then once you've got that done, go ahead and power on. And then this guy's gonna run for a minute. He's gonna boot up first, bring you to the initial load of the login prompt, and then the bootstrapping process will begin. So even though this looks familiar to you and I, do not worry, bootstrapping will still happen, as long as you can be sure that drive is attached. Now, <clears throat> if you're going about this for the very first time and you're gonna create your bootstrap disk, just like I've done here, turn it into an ISO, you wanna make sure that you've got a good ISO creator tool. I went and Googled one, I found this, this application called ImageBurn, and it made an ISO that did not work for me. So uh, I Googled some more, found an awesome author on Reddit who'd recommended you use this ISO creator from SoftSea, downloaded it, used it, and it works great. So not saying you have to use this one, but if you do run into problems, that could very likely be an issue. And so uh, don't discount the uh, format and the creation structure of the ISO itself. Right, so this is gonna go ahead and do kind of initial boot up. I'm gonna pause the video and then hop back on here in just a second once it's doing the next bootstrap specific things. 
Okay, so here's my login prompt, and ignore this for now, and we're about to see the bootstrap process begin. There you go. So it says, detected my media, you can read it from there, but essentially it's going to go through the several stages of those folders that are on the bootstrap ISO image, and then grab the contents from there. So I'm going to pause and unpause periodically so you can kind of see the, the steps as they're progressed through. And then once it's all done, uh, you'll see me kind of unpause, it'll do a reboot. And then after it comes back, it'll finish the bootstrap process. But the reboot is to bring it up to the latest PanOS version 10.06. Here you can see it's loading that 1006 into the hard drive of the firewall. After this is done, it'll do the install and then it'll reboot. There you can see it's installing now. Okay, it's copying over my configuration settings. Awesome, upgrade complete, going down for reboot. I'm going to leave the ISO file attached. I want to make sure that all the configurations have been copied over. So once this is done booting, you'll see a little bit more uh, bootstrap behavior happen about the same time when that initial login prompt loads. But still be patient. Let it finish doing its, its commit. And then when you see the DHCP address, that's what I had my init config uh, set to do, is pull DHCP for the management plane. Once the management plane address shows up, then you know it's ready for you to browse to, and you should be about ready to uh, log in. And if you see things like this uh, out of tree module, taints the kernel, don't worry about that, that's fine. That's uh, Stuff that is on the background that engineering is obviously aware of and uh, not anything for us to worry about. It wasn't induced by the bootstrapping. However, you can see that it did detect the bootstrap disk is still attached. Uh, it is management ready, so it's not going to do any upgrades, but it should go through and apply my licensing right now. And then it should take my uh, content updates. So we'll see those happen here in just a second. That's fine. Okay, you can see my license keys have been installed. The auth code has gone as expected. It took my initial config. And so let's go ahead and jump in and see what my firewall looks like. There we go. Let's log in. Now this isn't gonna be the default login. Again, my bootconfig.xml had a different password already staged in there. All right, coming up. Go ahead and dismiss these things. And now you can see it's got PanOS 10.06. It's got new apps and threats versions. And it's fully licensed with a serial number, just as we wanted. So that's how you bootstrap, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.